Here we go. How you doing? You doing good? Happy Tuesday. I love Tuesdays. Of course I love Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursday, Fridays. How do I look? I look good. That entourage of mine is nowhere to be found. I have no idea where they're at. I have some idea. One of them is right behind me. The other one is a few miles up the road. One of them is right down the road. They're close, but they're not here. An entourage, by definition, is supposed to be there. I mean, you watch when Muhammad Ali used to walk around. Huh? His entourage was right behind him. Huh? Where's mine? The president's entourage. Every president we've ever had has an entourage. I should have one too. I have one, but I don't know where they're at. Hey, I want to talk to you today about my third breakthrough. And this <clears throat> was life-changing. This was the breakthrough. I'm telling you what, this one took us from living and having enough, we had enough, and a little extra, to living in abundance. The, the breakthrough that caused abundance for us. Glory to God. Hey, about five years ago, Mary and I were, we had enough money. I'm not going to tell you we were broke. We weren't. We had enough money, but it, but it was, but it was a struggle. I mean, just not. You know, we had enough money every month, and we had money left over, and we had some money in the bank. But even so, nothing to write home about. And uh, we we did a deal. We did a, a venture, huge venture, and it was a complete disaster for us. Now, people got blessed and people got ministered to and everything, but it was, it just, it totally disrupted our lives and was a complete disaster. Well, afterwards, when we were cleaning everything up and it was just, we were just devastated. You know, when you have a major failure in your life, it's devastating. Mary and I were talking about that uh, yesterday while we were swimming in our pool. And uh, we were talking about the fact that there's so many people, when they fail at something, are just utterly devastated. It's, it's a life-changing experience. And it was for us, too. And I, would, I just became enraged. I said, you know what, honey? I said, this should not be. This is not supposed to be like that. God's word says, I am like a tree planted by the water and everything I do prospers. Something is wrong. Something, it, there's, there's something major wrong in my life. And I didn't know what it was. I did not know what it was. I knew that it was not sin. I had no sin in my life. I hadn't done anything wrong that was unrepentant. Of course, you know, people have made mistakes, and I've made mistakes too, but everything that I'd ever done wrong, I had repented for. I had no sin in my life. The Bible says if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins. And he also says that he doesn't even remember our sins. So I knew sin was not the issue. Number two, I knew I was not in disobedience to God. I have done everything I could to listen to God's voice and to do what God, what I thought God wanted me to do. And if God speaks to me, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do whatever he says. I knew, diso I knew obedience was not a problem. But there was a problem. A major problem in my life. And I didn't know what it was. 
And I started crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know something is wrong. I know it, and I know it's not your fault. I knew that our failure was not God's fault. That much I knew. I knew it was mine, but I didn't know why. And the Lord showed me. Took me to a series that somebody was preaching on the curse of the law. The curse of the law. And they were preaching this message on the curse of the law. And how uh, Christ has redeemed us. Their, their text was Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessing of Abraham can come upon the Gentiles. I knew I wasn't blessed. That much I knew. And they started, and I listened to that for several weeks and went over it and over it and listened to it and listened to it and listened to it. And they kept saying, this person kept saying and talking about Deuteronomy chapter 28. You can see I've been in that chapter. Deuteronomy 28. And he talked about the fact that verse 23, And thy heaven that is over your head shall be brass, and the earth that is under you shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until you be destroyed. And then he said, that's a hard life. Then he read Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. For thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. He was talking to me. But thou shalt be only oppressed, and nobody shall help you. I thought, I, you know what? I finally realized the curse of the law was working in my life. The curse of the law was the problem. Huh? It was the curse of the law. Was, was, was alive and well in my life. Not so much my health, because every time anything would flare up in our health, we'd just blow it out. We'd just, in the name of Jesus, get out. And I, and I had a huge healing ministry had had healing ministry for years, but our finances were hurting. And then I read, I read in Galatians chapter 3, oh, there it is, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, it says, it says, and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, which is the blessing. Wait a minute. That means that the blessing of Abraham is my inheritance. Galatians, Galatians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18 says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance for the saints. Inheritance. That blessing belongs to me but I don't have it now I'm on to something for eight months I'm telling you what people eight months I was after God about the <clears throat> your word says that Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law so that the blessing of Abraham can come over me. 
Your word says that the blessing of Abraham is my inheritance. Let's go. And I mean to tell you, I went on and on and on and on. Every day, all day long, it was nothing but blessing, 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 blessing. I confessed it. I, I believed it. I said the blessing of Abraham is my inheritance. I'd say that 500, 1,000 times a day. It just went on. I was relentless. They made me leave the house. I had to go to the beach and sit on a picnic table and talk to the Lord about the blessing. And I mean to tell you, did we ever talk about it? On and on and on and on. Eight months. Finally, in June of 2013, four years ago, June, the Lord spoke to me in an audible voice inside my belly, just like I could hear you when you talked to me. And he said, the key to the blessing is in Mark chapter 16. I went, whoa. Okay. I knew Mark chapter 16. There was nothing in there about the blessing. But I knew God wasn't wrong. He's never wrong. And I knew that was his voice. So I just kept confessing. Four or five days later, the voice came to me again. Now God's talking to me in an audible voice. I know his voice. And he says to me again, he says, the key to the blessing is in Mark chapter 16. I didn't know where it was. None of those verses added up to the blessing to me. Okay. But I knew I was on to something. I knew I had broken through. I knew, I knew God, God was working with me now. Then, a week later, I woke up one morning. Just as I was waking up, I, was, I hadn't even opened my eyes yet. And I heard this voice in my belly say, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. I flew out of that bed, ran out into the living room, grabbed my Bible, opened it to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse uh, 29. For thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness and thou shalt be only oppressed. I realized at that point that the curse of the law was oppression of the devil. If it's oppression of the devil, it is subject to the name of Jesus. I knew that. I stood up, I said, in the name of Jesus, I break the curse of the law in my life. And Mary and Jean heard the, the noise and they got up and they came out there and we all prayed together. I said, in the name of Jesus, we break that curse of the law in our lives, and I spoke the blessing over us. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. And I'm telling you what, that was the end of it. Within five months, $295,000 worth of debt was gone. We were accumulating money, and I'm telling you what, right now we are absolutely living in abundance. We broke the curse of the law. If you need help with this, we, you don't have to wait eight months. I can break the curse of the law in your life too. Go to my website, increasenow.com. Get a hold of me. Become a partner with this ministry. The first thing I will do is break the curse of the law in your life. And your whole life will change. Glory to God. You don't have to wait eight months. I can do this for you in two minutes. Amen. Have a great day today. And remember this. God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills.